Michael Beasley is one of the biggest personalities in basketball. He's also a walking bucket and has had some very quotable moments like the one I just showed before. Every now and then he'll pop off on social media because he's going head to head with NBA players and holding his own. There is no denying his talent and how he was one of the most dominant forces in college. His physical dominance and offensive talent are better than most NBA players. However, he struggles to stay in the NBA. Why is that so? What happened? Today, we'll have a deep dive into Michael Beasley's crazy NBA story. Let's go. Michael Beasley actually attended six high schools, but he attended Notre Dame Prep in Fitchburg, Massachusetts for his senior year. He was a McDonald's All-American that year along with some pretty notable names like Kevin Love, Eric Gordon, Blake Griffin, James Harden, and Derrick Rose. Even though all these other stars were at the game, Beasley was the most dominant player in the All-American game. He put up 23 points and grabbed 12 rebounds, which was enough for him to be dubbed the MVP of the All-American American game. Beasley was actually ranked third nationally by 247. In a stacked class, he only ranked behind Eric Gordon and OJ Mayo. 247 gave Beasley a rating of .9991. The craziest thing about Michael Beasley in high school was actually not his high school team or even the fact that he was a McDonald's All-American. It was his AAU team. He played for a team called the PG Jaguars and one of his teammates was a guy named Kevin Durant. That team had back-to-back -back Big 12 players of the year on it. Beasley and Durant were truly one of the most dominant AAU teams of all time, and they went on to win multiple AAU national championships. In 2007, Michael Beasley committed to the Kansas State Wildcats. His performance in the 2007-2008 season was one of the most impressive campaigns in the history of college basketball. As a freshman, he averaged the third most points in the country. On top of that, he averaged the most rebounds in the country. He led the nation in double-doubles, 40-point games, and 30-point games. He was held under 13 points only once in the span of a whole season. K-State eventually lost in the second round of the tournament, but Beasley's impact impact was evident throughout the entire year. He was chosen as a consensus first team All-American. In fact, Bleacher Report ranked his 07-08 college season as the 10th best single season performance in college basketball history, headlined by winning the USBWA Freshman of the Year as well as a Big 12 Player of the Year. Beasley's college performance dripped with NBA potential. NBA scouts were drooling all over his offensive arsenal. After an unstoppable one-year showing in college, Beasley looked like a lock for a future NBA star. What could possibly go wrong? Michael Beasley was in serious consideration for the number one overall pick. However, he ended up being selected with the second overall pick by the Miami Heat. In the summer league before his rookie season, Beasley looked like what everybody thought he would be. When matched up against the Chicago Bulls and the number one overall pick Derrick Rose, Beasley dominated, tripling Derrick Rose's total points. People were already saying that Beasley should have been selected with the first overall pick after what they saw in the summer league. Going into his rookie season, it looked like the sky was the limit. To his credit, his rookie season was solid. He averaged around 14 points per game on decent efficiency, but something happened earlier in the season that should have been seen as a red flag. The NBA has a program for upcoming rookies called the NBA Rookie Transition Program. It helps them ease into the league and learn about what they can expect once they've entered to the next level. However, Michael Beasley, Mario Chalmers, and Daryl Arthur did not enjoy the experience, and they were all nearly 
arrested. The fire alarm in the hotel went off at about 2 a.m. and the police were called. They discovered that Chalmers and Arthur both snuck women into the hotel, which was strictly against the policy. There were also reports that their hotel room reeked of marijuana, which was also against the league policy. Beasley's involvement in the issue is still unclear, but he refused to comply with the NBA's investigation and was fined $50,000 after he admitted that he was in the room with the other rookies. This incident would foreshadow things to come in Beasley's career. Next summer in 2009, Beasley checked into a rehab facility. This was after he posted a picture on social media with marijuana in the background, but it was never confirmed if these two things were connected. Nonetheless, he showed steady improvement next season. He averaged 14.8 points, 6.4 rebounds, and 1.3 assists in his sophomore season, which were all improvements from his rookie season. Although he had not become the anticipated star quite yet, he still showed potential and it looked like there was a chance that he could still become a star. Going into the 2010-2011 season, he was traded to the Timberwolves in a salary dump to clear up space for LeBron James to join the Miami Heat. His first year in Minnesota was undoubtedly his best season in the NBA. He averaged a promising 19.2 points per game and it looked like he was past all of his previous troubles and was ready for his career to really take off. However, the problems were only just beginning. Beasley was pulled over in Minneapolis for speeding, but that was not the main issue. The cops found marijuana in his car, which Beasley claimed was not his. He was still fined and ticketed and that became a detriment to his reputation. A few months later in August, Beasley was on a street ball tour with childhood friend Kevin Durant. They were playing in New York City and b Easy got into an altercation with the fan when he shoved the fan in the face. A few months after the altercation with the fan, Beasley's former agent, Joe Bell, filed a lawsuit against him. Bell claimed that Michael Beasley had many unpaid wages. Beasley launched a counter lawsuit against Bell, which led to a taxing legal battle. The reasons are still unclear, but Beasley was not the same after these incidences. He only averaged 11.5 points per game in the 11-12 season, and his career was in a downward spiral. He averaged a measly 10.1 points per game in the next season when he found himself playing in Phoenix. Unfortunately, he brought the off-court issues to Arizona. In August of 2013, he was arrested on suspicion of marijuana possession. Narcotics were found in his car, and the Suns released him about a month later. He was also a accused of sexual assault in 2013, but the cases ended up being dropped. He joined the Heat the next year and was ineffective, so he signed with the Shanghai Sharks of the CBA. He immediately established himself as one of the CBA's best players in the 2014-15 season. He averaged 28.6 points per game, 10.4 rebounds, and 5.2 assists per game as well. He also scored 59 points in the CBA All-Star game. At this point, Michael Beasley was in a really weird situation. He was easily one of the best players in China, and he definitely still had some NBA talent left. However, he could not stay on an NBA roster. He joined the Miami Heat for a third time on a 10-day contract, but they declined to pick him up for his option. He found himself back in China, but this time he was on the Shangdong Golden Stars. Beasley was once again utterly unstoppable. He averaged 31.9 points, 13.4 rebounds, and 3.8 assists. Remember how he scored 59 points in the All-Star game the year before? Well this time he scored 63 points and eventually was named the league's foreign MVP. Once again he got his chance to prove himself in the NBA. The Rockets signed him in the middle of the 15-16 season and he was actually pretty decent. He was putting up solid numbers night in and night out, but he was still on thin ice. He was given a chance to stay in the NBA the next season when he was traded to the Bucks. He was basically a bench warmer in the 2016-17 season and he also suffered a few injuries which caused him to miss a large chunk of games. The following season was when it looked like Michael Beasley's resurgence experiment might actually pan out. He joined the Knicks where he realized he was able to produce on offense. He had multiple nights where he scored over 20 points, including three 30-point games. He became the first Knicks player to ever come off the bench and notch 32 points and 12 rebounds. He became a free agent after that season and he signed with the Lakers. The most notable moment of his Lakers stint was when he forgot to wear his shorts and tried to check into the game with practice shorts on. He was eventually traded to the Clippers, where he was waived shortly after. Unfortunately, while he was a free agent, he violated the NBA's anti-drug 
drug policy and was suspended for five games. Last season, Beasley signed with the Nets for the bubble. This looked like it was going to be his last chance to prove himself in the NBA. Sadly, he tested positive for COVID-19 and his contract was voided. The flame of resurgence burned out as quickly as it began. Will Michael Beasley ever get another chance in the NBA again? Maybe. But I think he's had enough chances to prove himself. And unfortunately, he was not able to capitalize on his opportunities. So what happened? Why exactly did Beasley's career flame out? Well, we can trace his struggles in his career back to three main causes. First, it was off-court issues. Michael Beasley had a tough life growing up and he can never shake away his past. He was involved in a multitude of off-the-court issues and they were all harmful to his reputation. He was known as a stereotypical high NBA player and he could never shake that title off. I think the off-court issues are mostly to blame for his overall NBA struggles. But next, it was his lack of effort. There were multiple times where it looked like Michael Beasley just did not care enough. He was a complete liability on defense his entire career and he was not willing to put in the work. He was ultra talented but did not have enough hustle he needed to back it up. And lastly, it was his arrogance. This kind of goes along with the lack of effort, but Be Easy never believed that he needed to put in the hustle. A prime example of this was when he shoved the spectator at the streetball showcase. There was no need for him to do that, but he let his ego get the best of him. To be fair, he could get away with being cocky in high school and college because he was just better than everybody else. However, that does not fly in the NBA and Beasley found that out the hard way. Michael Beasley was a generational talent that did not pan out in the NBA. It happens. He's far from the first and he won't be the last. There's an aspect of Michael Beasley that can be appreciated. He was always true to himself and he did not let others push him around or tell him what he should or shouldn't do. Well that just about does it. I hope you found this video fun or at least a little bit educational. Hit the like button if you're still here and let me know in the comments what you think about Michael Beasley and if he should make it back to the league or not. Subscribe to stay up to date with the best basketball content. I want to finish this video the same way it started. So until next time, cheers.